What's going on guys? We are back with another replay analysis. This one of you got greened. He is a Diamond 3 Division 2. He was playing with his brother T-Bucks and a friend D-Money in this game and he wants to know like what he's doing wrong, what he's doing right, you know. The normal replay analysis that he got through patreon.com slash gibbs 0 You can get some replays analyzed there. There's some coaching tiers. There's some free play tiers where we have a lot of fun playing some ranked games or whatever games you want to play. And uh, there's also tournaments every single month at the $5 tier where you can win $75. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Not a ton of people sign up for these half the time. And gr everyone that makes the grand finals makes at least $5. Could make $20. So it's a lot of fun. We, we all hang out in Discord. We all have a grand old time. So definitely come to check out those. But on that, we're going to start the replay. And you got greened. He is a 34-year-old man. You would think he would know by now, with 34 years of experience, that the Merc is not the choice. But this is a very shiny orange Merc he's got going on here. We'll see how this replay goes. T-Bucks there. A little bit of a weak hit. But honestly, like this is not terrible. Like, I, I'm, so I'm going to go over like more of like pretty much everyone since it is he is teaming with people. So this is definitely a T-Buck play here. But this isn't terrible because he hits it really softly and throws it to the side. One thing, though, for Dark Pleb, this play right here is a play that he should be attacking on. So we'll see it right from the start. He gets a good uh, touch there. But at this point, he's the first man up. He knows they're on defense. Wait this out. See what type of rebound he gives you. Don't just immediately leave. See, he immediately leaves. He has 24 boost still. I get it. He probably wants the full boost, but I assume that's not even there yet. It's not even there. So he turns around for almost no reason when he could have played around T-Bucks just to see what type of touch it is and then continue the offensive pressure. But instead, he gave up on it early. And when you're the first man in threes, you should not really be giving up on plays that often unless you, like, desperately need boost. Like, if you have zero boost... You might have an argument, maybe, but if you have any boost at all, you should probably be attacking as that front man. And that's especially like if someone goes in the air. Like if they're on the ground, okay, it's going to be a hard clear. You know it's going to be a hard clear. But once they're in the air, that's when things get a little iffy. But let's go back. We'll continue with you got greened. So he does eventually make it around. Dank Pleb makes the play, but that's fine. They're just doing their standard rotations. Everyone's rotating around each other. That play was not the greatest, but I like these rotations here. We're going to let's go on a fly uh, view here for a second. So, first off, you got green misses the play. He rotates in. See how he spins right around there. And then T Bucks. See T Bucks. He actually rotates right behind him, and just goes and it's like, all right, now it's my turn, and just continue that rotation. The only thing is with T Bucks, could have been a little iffy because he, uh, you got green missed it. He kind of handbraked maybe a little bit too much. I saw him kind of like backing up. Should have maybe. Crept a little bit more towards the middle, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. And so that was some pretty good standard rotation there from the three of them. Go back to you got greened. And we'll go back to player view on him. I wasn't sure if player view was on. I thought it was on fly view for some reason. All right. No play was there for him, so he's going back. He's got to be careful with that shot. He's got to respect that. That's, like, definitely a case here where he started to move up. He's like, all right, it's my ball. But as soon as he sees flat line like that, go for the aerial you have to respect that shot because there really is no other shot anyway like if i line misses now dang club has to curve around the ball it's gonna take him some time and this is a, not a bad challenge whatsoever you come out you meet that shooter so well done there to read all those different types of plays all right he rotates back in gets the boost from the opponent there which is very good the thing he should have done here though possibly like it, like it depends i probably would have taken uh this or taken or whatever this mid boost as well just so the opponent would not have a chance to get any on this side of the field and he would have to go all the way back to the other corner to make a play but he is also oh he did get the boost nice well done by him i wasn't expecting him to actually go for it i thought he was going straight for the ball so this is a good boost control play he steals that boost he then boosts a little bit there just to steal that mid boost. And that's very important. A lot of this game, um, in my opinion, is keep the other team with as little boost as possible. And then they can't really do anything. So he does that. Now he's trying to make a play here. A little bit under that 50-50, but it happens. Just cycle on back. Everyone cycle on back. T-Bucks who went out. Again, very standard rotations. Very clean rotations by these three. A little bit of a weak touch here. Let's watch it again. So I think he thought he, he could be grounded. Like, he could have been grounded, uh, but the thing is he turned sideways on it. And once you turn sideways and your momentum is not going forward, 
you're going to like catch uh, the ball more. It's not going to bounce off your car because there is no forward momentum anymore. It's all sideways momentum. So it's kind of just going to smack against it and pop right up. Like if you had any more uh, forward momentum, it's going to smack and go forward. Uh, so you going to be very careful about that. Try and hit the corner of your car, but keep that forward uh, momentum going. But his teammate comes in, cleans it up. Nice bump there. Just get rid of him. He's got no boost. He's got to leave. Okay, no shot there for, uh, for blue team. And two of them go for that touch, which would have done absolutely nothing. So I want to go back and show what exactly would happen. So we'll go to Perry. Because Perry was the third one. So first touch, I understand like Dank Pleb wants to go up and touch this. And honestly, it wouldn't have been a great touch, but at least he could have passed it out to his other teammate. And he misses. But at this point, there's almost no reason to fly for this ball as the third man. And like that too, it was very awkward. Um, because if you smack them against the corner, there's no one available for the pass. The only thing he could have done is waste some time and throw it up the wall. And it didn't look like he was really trying for that. It looked like he was just trying to hit that as hard as he could. But very bad play by the blue team. But they're but they're all gonna get back in time. It's not a huge deal. Uh, like you got green doesn't really have a chance to like like get this ball out and into the middle. He could have tried for a pinch. I think he was kind of trying for that. Didn't really work to get the ball out to the middle. But. It's okay. He's going all the way back for boost once again. It's been very safe. Grab a boost when he can. Perfectly fine play right now. Good challenge here, but again, he goes low on this 50-50. This is the second time now where he's gone low on a 50-50. He's got to get above these balls just a bit more so these plays don't happen where the ball uh, goes straight up in the air. He wants to try and win those. He's got the Merc. You use that big body, even though now it is an, an Octane hitbox, but... Um, which is sad. That's why James Bond stopped using it. But anyway, good play here. Good supportive uh, defensive clear. But, ooh, just misses that dribble. Didn't really work out for him. But he had no boost, so at least he gets the boost out of it. Tries to bother people in the middle. Doesn't really amount to much. Oh, he's got to be careful there. He's trying to challenge at a weird time here. I think he thought his teammate didn't have a flip or something. Like, he came at this very awkwardly. It puts his third man in a tough spot, but T-Bucks makes a pretty decent play. Just gets the ball up in the air enough to make it out. And this challenge it wasn't great. He should have been challenging on this wall. Like right here, he should have turned up the wall, and he probably could have done a good 50-50 like, uh, with him. But he did kind of move forward a little bit too much. And then he, he comes in late here. Doesn't really work out, but he should keep on it here. Yeah, he should be continuing to try and challenge that play since he is that front man up. And his other two are kind of kind of, kind of, of stuck in net. And this is how their rotations have been, where they kind of fall back to net and maybe don't come out to aggress the play. So far, it hasn't really cost them, so I, so I haven't really mentioned it. But they do tend to go straight to the goal line and not try and hover around the middle. A lot of those plays were on the wall, so it makes sense. But got to be careful with that because then plays like this could happen where they have like a free shot. But I do like the idea of just trying to block that no matter what. Just keep going for those challenges since the other two are kind of stuck on the goal line. I do like that idea. He probably won't get much out of it, but it's at least something to keep the pressure on blue team so they can't take all the time in the world to take a shot. This is going to be a tough play. Good save, though. Very good save. And threw it to the left, which is very important because there is a guy in the middle, and you'll hear him boost in. I think he actually went for that hit, so it probably wouldn't have mattered. But if he didn't go for the hit, it's better to throw it to the left where both of your teammates are. Sure, there's two blue guys here too, but at least you know that the ball isn't going to be an easy win for the blue side. Say you threw it to the middle or to the right. Say that third guy didn't go for the shot. But he did, and you heard his boost. So like, if you did hear the boost, then you could have tried to throw it more middle or to the right. But still, he threw it to his teammates. And honestly, I would take that over most things. Every single time. Always throw it near your teammates. L let them have a chance to make a play. A little bit too fast on this takeoff. And this is what happens when you miss aerials. It's all about how you start when you first jump. Like what type of speed you have on the ground. What type of uh, momentum. And he just had way too much speed. So he couldn't make that back up. See if T-Bucks can get a pass. He cannot. I wonder if T-Bucks even looked for the pass here. Uh, so this is a play, like, when you miss a challenge like that, <coughs> uh, then you stay up front for you got greened. And look for the pass to play. 
it didn't even look like he really went for the pass there. It, maybe at the end he might have kind of hinted at it, maybe a bit. But didn't get the pass there, right to blue team. But that's a play where you got to throw it towards you got green so he can make a deflection type pass slash shot. And you don't really need boots for that. And then right there, flat line just beats them all, really. So right here, he tries to make a, make a move. And he does make a move, but T-Bucks is nowhere to be found. He's a little bit too far back. And so then he can make another move. That's some good dribbling. I understand uh, going for that challenge early. Oh. Okay, so that's... Okay, so let's go back to what T-Bucks was doing. This is not what you should be doing whatsoever. Like, he shouldn't be just slowly driving back towards his net. Again, like, this is that passive defense that they're playing. He should already be turning up the field and seeing what type of challenge happens here. Like, stay kind of close for a 50-50 or, for this instance, like a dribble play where normally when someone dribbles and they have to beat someone, the ball has to leave their car a bit unless you're an insanely good dribbler. So... If he was, like, anywhere closer for a challenge, he could have rushed this and made a play. But he's being a little bit too passive. And that's kind of the whole team. They're very passive on their defensive rotations. Trying to play it safe. But sometimes you have to be kind of aggressive on these rotations to keep those challenges up. Keep the pressure up. So far, we haven't seen a lot of offensive pressure from them either. It's been a very slow game all in all. Like, they have two shots and that was one of them. And uh, blue team has four shots. So it's like, nothing's really happening right now. They're playing a very safe game, but at some point you have to push up. You have to try and be a bit more aggressive and make some plays. It is more risky, but at some point. And let's, to be fair, when you are starting to play that high-pressure game and doing it well, it's a lot more fun to play Rocket League that way, in my opinion. Have a little bit more fun. Have your car going a little bit faster. Making more plays. Ooh, a little bit awkward, but it worked out. You got green, got the pass out to the middle. D money got beat. Good demo there. Oh, there's two demos. Let's see if they can get something going. All right, so this play right here, they have to communicate on what type of play they want to do. They know they have a 3v1 for a very small amount of time. But this is a play where D money has to try and throw this out to the middle. But where's T Bucks? So that's the main thing. T Bucks should have the. Uh, should have boost and should be uh, like available for something. He's more like directly in the middle. There's really no way D Money can make that pass. So I actually want to go back here a little bit. So we see the two demos. We see uh, you got green beat him to the ball there. And then T Box is just kind of trying to creep maybe a little bit too much to the middle. Like honestly, I'm not sure what he could have done there. It was kind of just like uh, you got green had to beat the other guy, and then the ball kind of went into like no man's land. And they really couldn't do much, but a little bit unfortunate. That's alright. A little bit of poor touch by D-Money, but T-Bucks is there. But now they have 50 seconds left, so they really have to start playing a lot more aggressive. Try and get that goal back. Soft hit here, which is not something you want to do. I understand the pressure, but right here, we see Perry going back. And we see uh, Dwerts or Flatline, whatever you want to call him. He's also heading back. So he kind of rushes this hit here, ma uh, makes a poor touch on the wall. And now this ball just slowly rolls the blue team, and it's a very easy clear. Instead of, like, forcing a 50-50 out. Good play there to, to cut off the pass. Help out his defender. But again, they really just can't get this ball out of their own zone. Oh, right there, he's caught sleeping a bit. Sometimes when you're in that high ball cam, like right here, you just lose track of everything else because you can't see anything. And you have to, like, remember that, hey, I should probably be jumping for this. Someone could be coming for the shot. And he just waits a little bit too long, but it didn't hurt them there. Just got to be careful. All right. They all have to move out now. Let's see what you got green does. Oh, no one goes for anything here. This is very strange. Like, T-Bucks doesn't really have anything. D-Money doesn't really have anything. Just threw the ball. Like, he throws the ball away, but doesn't chase it down. I don't care, like, if you have zero boost at this point. You chase this ball down. You're at max speed already, so it doesn't really matter. But you have to challenge this. You can't just give them a free clear like that. Like, boost is not worth it um, in that situation. You have to challenge that play. Because all you need at zero boost is to bring the ball up the wall, and you can make any pass that you want without any boost. You don't need any boost once the ball is like in their corner, wrapping around the wall. All you have to do is do a side flip off the wall and get the pass to the middle. Like, you can't be going for boost in that situation with 23 seconds left and down a goal. 
You need to make the challenge, uh, the 50-50, so your teammates can come in and clean up that shot. That's a really, really poor play uh, that could cost them the, the entire game. Uh, T-Bucks right here, not a great clear on this play. He has to retreat here. Doesn't have much boost. Oh, there we go. He just picked it up. Problem is, he picks up the boost, but as he's turning around, he uh, gets caught off by the uh, ball speed. So he uh, hits it just before it bounces, which is never a good idea. And then it's just a slow hit out to the middle. But I like the idea of him trying to boost in the air to make another challenge. Somehow blue team uh, missed that play. And then we'll go back to you out green. He's got to attack here with T-Bucks. Here's the shot. There it is. There's the goal. I figured there was one coming in um, if there was a replay here. But there we go. Finally, some pressure. Good work. All three definitely have to attack there. There's 13 seconds left, and they get it done. Well done there. And now we got a tie game. Good challenge on the wall. Let's see if he can wrap it around. It's not close enough. Ooh. That was not expected at all. Excuse me. Sorry. Ooh. Yawns. Uh, it's right here. Flatline does the field's backflip. Not expected at all, but at that point, once you hear that backflip... He could have maybe readjusted. Like, at first, he's trying to speed there, try and, like, hit it as soon as possible. But then he just misreads how fast that ball's coming out. Or, like, it was going slow, obviously, but it was going faster than what he uh, uh, imagined. But as soon as you hear that backflip, that's when you got to readjust. Be like, all right, I actually do have a really good chance of this, and I don't have to necessarily rush it. Like, you still want to, obviously, but you just got to be a little bit more aware of that. But it happens. We get the clear. No play there. Luckily, Dwartz is backwards here. Uh, this player here is a little bit awkward for you, got Green. He's kind of just sitting there watching. Um, and then and the ball kind of slips away from him. Not much he can do there. He's kind of in no man's land. Maybe he turns around as that ball's in the air, but that's a lot of trust on his teammates. Which, at some point, you kind of have to give, but it's not the easiest play in the world. It is very awkward. All right. Getting the ball out. Again, they're being a little bit passive on that third rotation. We see here, like, uh, you got green. Doesn't move up as quickly as I probably would on the third rotation, but. See, like, at that point, see, that was the part where that's when you turn around. Um, right here, as soon as the ball goes up on a wall, and you're the third rotation, and two of them are in the same corner, this is when you leave. And, and that's when he actually moved up, which is uh, surprising. I guess he thought Dank might miss it, but he didn't. And he gets the mega clear. Luckily, it's not in or anything, so not a huge deal. Here, he kind of rushes the hit once again. Got to be careful with this. Like, no one's really around, and I get it. Like, you didn't see flat line. Um, and uh, this is a good idea when um, you don't see anyone. Use that right camera really quick. Like, snap it to the side just to look. It's kind of awkward because you're not used to it, but it could really help. Uh... But Flatline wasn't that close. He kind of just smacks it right to him. But that's okay. He has two defenders. So, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. But, obviously, I'm going to be a little nitpicky on this. Uh, this one, he could have actually had a really good double tap. Uh, he had a really good opportunity for this. So, he hits the one. Um, if he flies up in the air here, he flew down, though. Like, if he flies in the air at, like, a 45-degree angle, um, he definitely can get this double tap. Just, he kind of rushed the sideways momentum and then... He didn't have any uh, momentum to go up in the air anymore because he had no more boost. No more thrust. Oh, here's the play. D-Money with the tap. Let's see if he's got it. Oh, T-Bucks. Oh, so close. All right. Let's see what happened here from T-Bucks' point of view. It's tough. I feel like he has to go for it, but it's, like, it's a tough call at this point. Because, like, if he was, like, a little bit more sideways on his card, that that ball gets hit a lot harder, but he hit it with his wheels. And he might have stole a goal away from you, got green, but it's tough because you see it there and you're so close to it. But this is where uh, communication comes in. Like, hey, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, and maybe T-Bucks can fall out. Again, though, it's, it's hard to call on plays like that. And it was so close, but no goal. But that's just, like, communication. Like, he's got to say, like, hey, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. And then T-Bucks could maybe be called off from going for that play. He still might have went for it. Because if he thought, hey, I have a goal, I'm going to take it. Uh, then he, then he'll take it. Because if he's the first one to hit it, it's up to him like if he's going to go or not. So, Alright, 
Let's see right here. Okay. Good save. Good save. Watching that line. A good kill. Just missed times when Perry's going to challenge him here. So he does a flip early. He could have like dribbled that into him a little bit more, Perry, so it's not a clean 50-50 win. But it's hard to see over that giant Merc. So I get it. And that's why I think a lot of people don't play Merc anymore. Like, for James Bond reason, it's an Octane hitbox. Now it's just more in the way. You can't really see anything. It used to have a different hitbox, so it was worth it. But it's not worth it anymore. So that's why a lot of people will just use Octane. Because it has the same exact hitbox and turn radius and all that. And you can see over it. Oh, everyone misses. T-Bucks has a good play here. Gets the shot. Let's see what happened with T-Bucks here. I couldn't really tell. So everyone misses. He comes out. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it looks a bit awkward. Like, I do like that shot, though. He gets it in the air and makes an attempt happen. Um, he could have maybe stayed for this again. Like, you got greened was up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, D-Money was up there. But, again, he's in the air. I would have probably put on my brakes and just see what type of rebound it is and then try and make a play off it. He immediately leaves. Like, last time it was blue team that, like, immediately left. And this time it was T-Bucks. And he could have had a shot there. Like, when you're that front man, just kind of cheat up there. Wait it out. Wait for that rebound. See what happens. Because you have two defenders. You don't necessarily have to be back as well. Here we go. Get a little ping pong action. Getting pretty long into this one. So, we're probably just going to streamline through this one at this point. I want to go back to this hit right here, though. Like, this is a tough play. He's got to try and just keep that in the air since... No matter where he hit that left or middle, it was going to go back to Perry. So, at that point, you, you, like, you want to just tap it in the air. Just to avoid him from doing much. It's actually a good no hit by you, Got Green. He probably didn't mean to do it, but it left that whole left side open for T-Bucks. Problem is, T-Bucks didn't do anything with it, but hey, it happens. This could be a play. All right, T-Buddy moving up. You Got Green, good challenge. T-Bucks being very passive in net. It's a, it, it, like understandable there. That was definitely a blue ball. Oh, almost. Almost a little by them. There we go. That's the, the touches I, I wanted to see last time. Gets the little, little triple touch to get it by everyone. Dink Pleb going for another sh shot. Or, not sure if, if he was the last one to do that ceiling-ish shot. Another good clear, though, but... It's some good plays by Blue Team right now. Just keeping this ball in. Oh, this is a little bit awkward. Nice play there. See, that time he goes high on that 50-50. And see how much better it was. He goes high. Waits to use his flip in case he has a side roll. Makes a really good challenge. All right. Keep it going. D-Money. Ooh, gets the double hit. He definitely needed that extra hit, but it worked out. All right, two of Blue Team are in the same corner. Let's see if they can push this out quickly. <laughs> Just another clear. Just everyone being very, very passive. T-Money trying to make the play. Oh, hits the post. Oh, no. T-Money, just get out of there. Just get out of there. Yeah, like T-Money uh, doesn't have an angle again. Like, uh, you got green. Just got to tell him, get the fuck out of my way. Coming in for the shot. But uh, that's twice that uh, you got green kind of got screwed out of a shot by his teammates. Anybody up? Oh, we should have hit that. Should have hit it, but you got Green's got the ball. At least moving around. Oh, oh, a little bit better. Again, he was going a little bit too fast on the ground, and he speeds under the ball. He's got to be careful about that. Definitely tap on the brakes right before you go in the air sometimes. It is a good thing to gain more control in the air. You have to use a little bit more boost, but you'll gain a lot more control Like instead of when you're going extremely fast on the ground. Oh, D-Money uh, gets beat there. He should be able to wall clear this. He went up a little bit late on that, actually. That's going to cost him the goal here. I want to see what happened with D-Money. Oh, he, he has no boost. Okay. Yeah, he just ran out of boost, so it makes sense. Um, where was T-Bucks during this? T-Bucks is just on his way back. Yeah, just over his head. Unfortunate play there, but that'll do it for this replay. We got double time. Double five minute game. Well, five minute game, then five minute overtime, and two seconds. And that'll do it for this replay. I saw some things with you, I agree. Like, one, 
Team is very passive on the defensive side we see here. They actually started to get some shots on that, but blue team obviously had a lot more. Uh, try to be a little bit more aggressive as the third man, and as the first man, be more aggressive. Don't immediately leave the play. You don't always have to do these super clean rotations. It's not like it's fine to do, and it'll keep you in games, like very uh, defensive game here, but also doesn't give you a lot of offensive chances as well. And then his 50-50 game, I felt, was a little bit off. And his aerials, 50-50s, uh, try and go higher on them. And then on the aerials, try and slow it down a little bit on the ground before you take off and then go for the aerials. And that should help a lot. But that'll do it for this replay analysis. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.